Tension wood formation is a very essential process for the tree because it needs to assure that it can grow towards um, a gravitatory axis, so upright. Mm. Um, trees are exposed to different forces out in the forest, for example, um, there's wind, they can also be growing, for example, on the slope when they grow on a hill. The idea came from the fact that we have been studying tension wood formation for quite some years now and we have studied usually the formation of the tension wood as such. We have bound the trees to table and let them form tension wood, disregarded the mechanical effects on the uprighting, but studied which molecular processes are ongoing during tension wood formation. Right. So this was the idea we had come from. We wanted to film the uprighting and measure the uprighting process of these trees. The students have developed a setup that allows us to film the uprighting process over about three weeks of time, which is the time that it takes for the tree to reorient its position to an, a, a better growth position when it's laid on the table. Um, it makes it possible to record this, but also to calculate the angles of the uprighting, for example, in an automated way. So we can observe uh, 12 different plants um, in a way that allows us to monitor them stationary, so they are not moved anywhere, there's no impact on the plants Why they are showing this response. Um, and the data analysis is much facilitated because it's automated as well. So it's a minimum impact during this process from our side. I think actually this course is very beneficial because uh, you have students from different disciplines. And I think this reflects very much the real world because they have to work together in this project, which means they have to be able to explain each other's reasoning in words that the other person can understand. And uh, by phrasing things in a different way, you come up sometimes with new ideas or new solutions. It's called the Scrum that we have used. Um, this means that the project goals are subdivided into different backlog uh, stories. And the students choose for a, a sprint, it is called, of three weeks, a certain amount of stories that they want to work on and define tasks that they need to um, comply with to, to finish these stories. So the stories can be, for example, in our project was to build a setup for with the cameras or to make a graphical user interface. And because it's well defined, they have quite some independence to uh, manage their own project in that time. Every morning we have a meeting where everyone tells the others what they have done the day before which problems they have faced and what they want to do this day so that everybody is always uh, knowing what's going on in the group. After the three weeks we have a, a demo where the students show me as a project owner what they have come up with even though I followed the process also during the daily scrums and we have a retrospective where we reflect what has been working well and what has been not so well during these three weeks and what we want to improve for the next three week sprint. And one of these five students has, for each of these three weeks sprint, been the scrum master that had to manage the team and the tasks that were selected. So the students put up all the tasks that they want to, or the stories that they want to work with, and they have written all the tasks that they want to work with and estimated the approximate time it will take, and they put that up on a, on a board under a category to do. And then I have two more columns on this board, which is doing and done. So uh, they move the post-its and they indicate who is working with what, depending what they are actually working on and what is finished. So it gives, gives them a very visual um, way of seeing the progress of the, the, the project. I think this is a much more, this course has much more freedom. Uh, it gives much more power to the students. It's more freedom about what they actually work on. It's based, whatever they will do is based on their competence, but uh, the interdisciplinary aspect is something that is hardly ever happening in the courses because usually the physics students have their, stu their courses at the physics department and the others have theirs here in the biology. And you have to share your knowledge 
And by sharing your knowledge, you usually learn more yourself about what you actually do. So I think um, this is a very good course.